Let me paint you a picture. It's 10 a.m. and you've just woken up because you don't have to be anywhere at a particular time today. Amazing. But now you remember that Jocko Willing said that if you want to be successful, you need to get up at 4 30 a.m. And David Goggins said, Why the fuck you up if you're not fucking ready? Now an insatiable guilt kicks in, and rather than doing something about your perceived inadequacy, you take out your phone to find some evidence that you are, in fact, not a piece of shit. Turns out nobody's texted you overnight, your inbox is empty, and so you resort to doom scrolling your preferred social media. The more you scroll, the more unenthused about your life you become which makes you want to scroll even more but then you find that no amount of scrolling porn chocolate or whatever your vices are will do the trick and all of a sudden the day is almost over and you've only managed to move from the bed to the couch all the while feeling like your butthole after evacuating the spicy takeout you had last night if you can relate to any part of that then this video is probably for you Recently, I decided to do a digital detox. It's not the first time I've done it, but this was a monumental decision for me because I had fallen into compulsive behavior that was really, really jeopardizing my mental, physical, and all sorts of health. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how it got that bad in the first place, and then talk about the 24 hour digital detox that I did that helped me bounce back from it. Quick disclaimer, I'm definitely not advocating against using digital. I think digital is incredible. In fact, at the end of the video, I'm gonna explain how a digital detox can help you get even more out of digital and actually thrive alongside it. The first part of this video, we're gonna talk about what is dopamine because that plays a big role in the digital detox. It's often that people use the words digital detox and dopamine detox interchangeably, but in fact, calling it a dopamine detox is not an accurate description of what's happening when we do a digital detox. Dopamine is a brain chemical associated with wanting things. It's the thing that motivates you to drink water when you're thirsty or turn on the heating when you're cold in the winter. It's what motivates you to call the girl you fancy because you want to kiss her. Basically, dopamine is what helps us stay alive and get shit done. The problem arises when the pain and pleasure in our lives isn't balanced. Enter cheap dopamine. Historically, dopamine release was more staggered and you usually had to work for it hunt an animal for food, read a newspaper for entertainment, walk across town in order to connect with your friends. You didn't have the option for takeout or microwave meals. You couldn't scroll Instagram and you certainly couldn't text your friends and have conversations in real time. With the evolution of technology, we've removed a lot of the hardship involved with the release of dopamine. Basically, we don't need to earn our dopamine anymore because we've got a million things to be excited about right in the palm of our hands. If you're getting dopamine over a staggered period of time, for example, a 60 minute workout, that's gonna have a different impact on you than if you were to jack off four times in the space of an hour. In the world of the internet, social media, and texting, we found ourselves with a predicament because each time you see a message or watch a video or get a like on your post, that signals to our brain to send dopamine. Now that's fine if you had a 15 minute dedicated slot where you were gonna go on social media, but for the most part, that's not really how we function, is it? Part two, why detox? I'm not an expert on this by any means, but I have gathered my knowledge from psychologists and neuroscientists like Nicola Perra and Andrew Huberman, respectively, so it's not like I'm just guessing what's happening here. Reason number one, I'd been engorging myself with cheap dopamine. Excessive use of social media, porn, and frantic checking of email and text messages lead to an excessive release of dopamine, which results in a crash. But each time you peak, your crash is gonna be lower than your baseline. So when you overdo it, you actually feel worse than you did before. It's a slippery slope, and I had spiraled into a state of lethargy and no motivation to do anything. Number two, my second point is based on a trauma-informed psychological approach. I noticed that typically if I'm mindlessly scrolling, the moments leading up to that, I wasn't feeling very good about myself. So I might've been feeling sad, or angry or frustrated about something. These feelings are uncomfortable in the body, and so what we do is we enter a state of hypervigilance to try and eliminate the threat, so to speak. The ways that I would try and eliminate my perceived threats would be checking my bank account to see that I had enough money, seeing if anybody had texted me to tell me that they cared about me, or just seeing that my social media posts were doing well because I received validation from that to some extent. Sometimes I enter an echo chamber on Twitter where I find a bunch of people that share the same beliefs as me and are giving out about other people that have different beliefs and that makes me feel safe and part of a tribe because we're all shouting at the same people together, but really it's not healthy. Basically, in most cases, my digital use was hampering my motivation or preventing my healing and coming to terms with the trauma and discomfort in my life. My digital use was completely in conflict with who I wanna be and how I wanna live my life. I wanna be happy, healthy, I want community, I want kindness, but I wasn't using the digital world for any of these things. Part three, the detox. I recommend you clearly set the intention and parameters the night before and take some action steps to make it easier to stay on track on detox day. 
My detox usually means no social media, no calls, and no checking notifications or inboxes. I don't see a problem with watching a movie at the end of the day, but I definitely wouldn't engage in any short form content. I make sure my schedule is clear and I like to get out of the house, go somewhere unfamiliar and far away if you can. Interrupting your usual pattern is a good idea because that's typically the thing that got you in the situation where you felt the need to do a detox in the first place. To be honest, I don't find the detox process itself to be that difficult, but it's more so recognizing that you have an issue and then taking the action steps to do something about it. When it comes to the day of the detox, I like to compare it to if you've been binge drinking, you don't need to pee until you pee. So when you do break the seal, so to speak, you end up needing to pee more often. And it's the same with, you know, getting dopamine hits. It's like if you check your phone first thing, five minutes later, you check it again, 10 minutes later, you check it again. And before you know it, you're just in this loop. So if you can refrain from using your phone from the first portion of the day, it's actually going to be a lot easier for you to not use the phone for the rest of the day. So on the detox day, I got into my car and drove around to visit some beaches and parks in my area. And I stopped for a coffee and dinner along the way. I felt a lot of clarity going places with no real direction of what I was doing and just moving at a slower pace. I'd actually intended to go to one place in particular, but since I didn't have my phone, I couldn't use maps and so I couldn't find the place, but I ended up somewhere else instead, which was kind of nice. And you could say that it's irresponsible that I didn't get to where I was going because I wasn't knowledgeable enough of the area, but who's to say that we need to know where we're going all of the time? We're so focused on making sure that we know exactly where we're going in life that we don't allow life to present us with fun opportunities that we wouldn't otherwise have gone toward because our mind is like A goes to B, not C. But if you actually just allow A to lead to D, you might have a great time at D and B might have sucked. In fact, it's kind of reminded me that I want to get lost more often in life because getting lost is exciting. Getting lost in business, you can find new avenues of business that you wouldn't have ever thought of with your original business plan or getting lost on the street or your cafe being closed. And so you have to go to another one, but then you end up meeting someone at that one. And it's like, well, good thing the other one was closed because now you got a new best friend. If I was bored, I didn't escape the boredom. I just embraced it and appreciated the nature around me or the people sitting in the cafe with me. One guy was on a video call and he was just talking and laughing so loudly. It was so obnoxious, but at the same time, everyone else in the cafe was just looking and smiling at one another because it was so ridiculous that this guy was so loud. And that was just a really nice free moment that didn't cost me my mental health or anything. If I reflect upon the problems that I experience in a given day, so much of it is because I'm consuming too much social media. I'll see someone online and I'll compare myself. I'll frantically look at the statistics of things that I've uploaded and be disappointed I mindlessly consume media that just does not align with the life that I wish to live. The things that really nourish me are like community, co-creation and like bringing ideas to life like this video, for example. Part four, some wisdom from the past. I spoke with a friend of mine recently about this topic. He was born in the 1960s when digital wasn't as accessible as it is now. And he described to me the way that he used to escape. And it was pretty basic, like playing the guitar. And if you were really lucky, you might find a porn magazine, but nothing compared to what we have now. And it caused me to mourn the life that I never had of relative detachment from the digital world. The anxiety of waiting for people to respond to messages or reach out to you was just off the table. You'd send someone a letter and if there was no response, you just assume that it never reached the destination. Whereas now you assume you've been ghosted. Sometime in the 1980s, my dad just disappeared on a solo journey across North America and nobody heard from him for months. And that wasn't even considered too ridiculous. Part five, thriving in a digital world. At the beginning of this video, I said that I'm not against the digital world and I am not at all. It's got a lot going for it. Education, entertainment, connecting with people, that's all wonderful. But when it comes to thriving alongside the digital world, we have to come back to this idea of the pain and pleasure balance. Too much pleasure, you've got too much cheap dopamine, which means you're gonna end up in that lethargic, unmotivated state. If you've ever done a fast from food, you've probably heard the idea that it's not necessarily the fasting that you get the benefits from, but it's the things that you decide to put into your body after. And I think it's the same with the digital detox. If you just do a detox and then go straight on Pornhub the next day, you're probably gonna end up in the same situation that you were to begin with. That being said, I think it's a good idea to have a framework that's gonna help you minimize the 
unconscious and poor use of digital going forward. It's when I don't have a loose plan that I can find myself in trouble. I might feel uncomfortable and then just be like, oh, I'll just go on social media for a minute. And then that turns into two hours. This is where the framework comes in because if you feel uncomfortable, all you have to do is look at your framework and see, okay, what time it is. It's two o'clock, two o'clock means I'm doing this. And just do that. No matter how poorly you do it, just do that because ultimately that is better than the alternative of binge watching something that is not going to be healthy for you. This is a loose example of the framework that I've come up with for myself at the minute. So from the time that I get up till around 1 p.m., I try to avoid technology and if I am on social media or anything like that, it's usually long form content and it's mindful content like a podcast or an educational YouTube video. Other than that, the mornings are just for my morning routine, so my meditation, breath work, maybe I'll go socialize or any other obligatory tasks that I have to do for the day. 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. is where I've dedicated time to work on video or music related stuff. 5 to 6 would be dinner and maybe slot in some sort of mindful content here too. And then 6 to 8 continue the work from the afternoon on music or video or whatever. 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. would be entertainment, which ideally is going to be long form content because I don't know about you, but I feel a lot more grounded after watching a two hour movie than when I scroll TikTok for two hours. Now, prior to this detox, I would be always on my phone up until like 2 a.m. So after 10 p.m., I have a strict no tech rule. So I've reverted to just reading books instead, which I don't typically do, but I've actually been quite enjoying that. Between 10 and 11, I'll take a shower, do some yoga, meditate, stuff like that. And then 11 onwards until I fall asleep, I'll just read a book. From that framework, digital is kind of limited to the first portion of the day and then the end of the day, but it's kind of mindful media. And then in terms of my actual like social media stuff, I just go on TikTok and Instagram to post stuff ideally and then, you know, check in on what happened while I was gone while I'm posting stuff. So that's minimize the time on there. Since this latest detox, I've been feeling pretty good and the framework is really helping ground me. Of course, I'm going to have ruts and slip ups, but if I can maintain the framework and r avoid reverting back to binge watching things, I feel like that's going to help me long term to maintain progress on my goals and all that stuff. That's it for this video. I hope you found some benefit in my story. And maybe if you're having a hard time, I just want to say you can totally do something about it. Just like do this in 24 hours and then you'll have a clean slate to you know, start fresh and, and try and implement some sort of framework to help you on your way. If you enjoyed this video, please like the video, leave a comment, let me know what you thought about it. Any questions, leave them in the comments too. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.